Well, hello friends, here we are in the field today. I've already had a failure <laughs> with this wing so far, so hopefully I can get something flying. I wanted to revisit this guy. This is a little seven inch quad that I recently put the AKK 5 watt uh, VTX on. I flew it about a kilometer and a half, but then I had some really bad uh, ERS um, signal where it was like dropping out like, you know, past the, the minus 95 dB. This is an old um, R9 receiver that I modified with the, the firmware to become uh, ELRS. But um, one thing I didn't have was the radio power on the OSD, so I've added that. Um, one of the other things I do, because you'll see this is a horizontally polarized antenna, is I made sure we're going horizontal on that. And if the Nomad module gives me issues, then I've also got uh, my old, I want to say Bandit module, yeah, Bandit module, along with uh, the normal T antenna and a Moxon antenna. So I can try various things out. I can put these two antennas on the Nomad as well to see how that goes. So that is the plan. Let's see how it goes. But just before we get into the flying, a quick word from our sponsor today, who is PCBWay. PCBWay, as its name suggests, can prototype and assemble PCBs for you. If you design your own PCBs, then you probably know this already. But with open source hardware becoming more of a thing, you'll often be able to get a Gerber file from a project which contains the PCB design and send this to PCBWay to get your own PCBs made without needing to know anything about PCB design. But it's not just PCBs. CNC machining, laser cutting, sheet metal bending, 3D printing and injection molding are just some of the extra things they can do. And in materials that are out of reach for most hobbyists. So if you want to have a look at getting them to make something for you today, check them out at pcbway.com. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, so first flight, you'll see my VTX is set to one watt and my ELRS is on dynamic power, currently 10 milliwatts. If we just fast forward through the sort of the first kilometer or so, because it's all pretty, pretty much as you expect, pretty good picture, pretty good signal. And we'll go out to as we get over the sea. And at this point, it's I'm looking mostly at my DBM RSSI because that's gone above minus 95, which I think is bad. But you'll notice the LQ barely moves. And it's like, well, well that's, that's weird. What's happening there? So on my second flight, I kept the VTX power with one watt, but I manually set the ELRS power to 500 milliwatts, which should be absolutely loads for something on 868. And then I redid the flight to see what sort of a situation we got into. And as we get over towards the sea, you could see that our DBM RSSI signal is much better at minus 77 instead of like around the minus 90. When I first started using Express LRS, I only used to have the LQ up there, which is actually not a bad way of doing it. The LQ is how what the percentage of packets coming through, and at the moment we've got 100%, whereas the DBM RSSI is the actual signal strength. Now, either of those, you could have full packets coming through at a very low strength, or you could have a very high strength signal and lose packets depending on the interference. So it's kind of looking at both of those to determine if your signal is good. And I've I've become a little bit OCD about looking at the DBM RSSI, and I tend to sort of worry if it gets up what I perceive as being too high. But you'll see here, we're doing pretty well. We just came out to about 2.3, where I start to sort of detect a bit of a bit of fuzziness from the VTX. So I think, well, is that is that about it for for one watt? And it might be, but I decided to turn it around anyway because I thought, well, I can now bump the power up and see what happens on a higher power to see if we get through that. I have to say, I've flown some things on 200 milliwatts and I would expect to get further than this without any breakup. So it's it's okay. It just depends. You can have different things on different days, atmospheric conditions, RF conditions, different things going on. It's all a bit changeable. But I decide I go back. I'll whack the power up on the VTX and I might as well whack the power up on ELRS as well and see what happens. Okay, so as mentioned, we're now on one watt of ELRS power and five watts of VTX power, which is quite a lot. But in terms of range, you have to basically quadruple your power to go twice as far. So five watts is probably about twice as far as one watt will get you and really it's not really worth going any higher than that because you'd have to then go up to like 20 watts which would be ridiculous. Okay so as we hit the sea here we're on about minus 77 which seems to be a very common 
uh, place to get to. It was interesting because it was slightly higher when I was closer to the land and I'm wondering if there's just a little bit of RF noise from the buildings and stuff going on but all looks good so far so I'm carrying on to see what happens it, out in the middle of the sea and it's not too far to cross over to the mainland from this island um, as you see we're just just past the two kilometer and we're starting to come up on the next shore this was the place that the one watt start getting a bit speckly and things so interested to see here if it comes clear because essentially we would like okay that was a bit bit fuzzy there at one watt so let's turn around and see what happens at five watt and yeah at five watt the 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 five times the power but double the range effectively seems to work quite nicely now my plan here was to go for about three kilometers because uh, I can't go past the end of the field because we've got a very busy road which we don't want to cross going straight into a town but what I managed to do is look at my cumulative distance which is down at the bottom right instead of my distance from home which is the top middle so I hit three kilometers cumulative where I'm only at 2.87 so that was a bit dozy of me so still as far as I've been actually on a quad I don't generally fly more than like a kilometer and a half on a quad mostly because the batteries just don't last that long but now there's a lithium ion and I'm flying with a 4000 milliamp hour lithium ion pack we get a lot longer it's it's pretty easy to get like a 10 minute flight and you know even playing it safe going four minutes out four minutes back obviously taking into account like the wind is it's pretty easy you get decent range there um, the interesting thing about doing this flight is my legs were quite shaky and I haven't had that since like 10 years ago when I first took my old F450 out to one kilometer that was that was scary and made me sort of shake um, it's not like I didn't trust it it's just it, the first time you do it uh, especially flying over water and thinking well if this goes down here that's 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 it but really when you start getting kilometers away from yourself wherever you're going to go down it it does become a little bit like mm, am I going to get this back or not so it, it's not quite the same worry as it is because it's wherever it goes down it's like well I think that's lost now but what I wanted to do with this because I was confused about several things firstly the dynamic power when does it kick in when should it up the power because i was thinking it's not doing it quick enough the second thing is am i panicking too early like i've decided that like minus 95 is that's like not much signals getting through and therefore i should turn around but that's just my arbitrary like i've decided that if it's c three figures that's bad in terms of rsi dbm therefore i put it at minus 95 to give myself a bit of safety and that is based on my feeling rather than actually knowing a lot more about it. I know the, the max DBM it can go up to is like minus 100 and something, which is why I kept that little layer. But was that the right thing to do? And that's what I wanted to look at next. So the first thing I looked at is the documentation on Express LRS, trying to figure out how the dynamic transmit power would work. And it's simply not as straightforward as saying if the DBM RSSI is below this value then we'll up the power. It is kind of if you're on one of the F modes in which case it's like if is lower than minus 89 then up the power but if you're on one of the LoRa modes it takes into account the signal to noise ratio and that's something we haven't got visible in the telemetry so it's not quite as simple as thinking well it looks like it's going above 95 so therefore it should up the power. So what I took a look at then is about the sensitivity of the receiving end. Now I was using 100 hertz full on my system and you can see that the sensitivity limit there is minus 112 dBm. What I wasn't sure is how real that was. Can I take myself all the way there? But even the documents suggest you give yourself a buffer of like 5 or 10 dBm. So I could at least be in the 100s. So I wanted to check that. I turned to the Discord group for Express LRS. And if you've ever been in the help and advice channel on the Discord, you might know about the legend that is a guy called Deadbike who seems to be there almost 24 hours a day tirelessly answering questions one after the other and is just an amazing amount of knowledge and help. So I asked him about this and he said look you can go much further than minus 95 and one thing I said was well is the scale if you go is it 
like linear is like minus 96 just a bit above minus 95 and he said no no it's logarithmic and that what that means in simple terms is when your signal is very strong and you start off you'll see it lose signal quite quickly and I can demonstrate that here if we look at this takeoff you'll see we, we go up quite quickly but as we go further out it takes much much more to lose this signal some more so I was probably very safe even at minus 97 and just to illustrate that point further here's a video that Deadbyte linked me to. Now this is Deadbyte's own video flying at 10 milliwatts at 915 and you'll see as per normal you do the takeoff and you'll see the dBm value fall off quite quickly and you know goes up to minus 80 with, within like 30 seconds or so. I should point out he's flying in the Philippines which is perhaps a different RF environment there's there's not the sort of population density that we have anyway as he goes further out he gets up and starts touching minus 100 at about 2.3 2.4 kilometers however at four and a half kilometers or so he's still at minus 100 so the difference between several kilometers and he pretty much jumps around the, the minus 100, minus 102, to minus 103 until five and a half kilometers, going over a complete distance of something like 6.3. Just to illustrate that A, 10 milliwatts will get you a long way, and B, being over a minus 100 isn't necessarily a bad thing. You've still got some space there, and you've still got quite a lot of room just within like a single digit dBm value, which I found really helpful and interesting. So several points to make, or observations from my point of view. Firstly, the original intention was to take the 5 watt uh, VTX for a bit more of a, a distance thing. And that was from AKK, so many thanks to those. There'll be a link down below if you're interested in it. But aside from that, the, the points to make is, to, to go that far, I certainly didn't need to have 5 watts. The reason I wanted to up the power to 5 watts is I found that at the 1 watt distance, I got that bit of a, a speckle and stuff started to come in. I thought, oh, that's useful, because then I can check if the next power level up is going to get rid of that, which it did. Often a case of, like, you can fly that far out on perhaps 200 milliwatts, depending on the type of VTX you have, and be absolutely fine. This actually worked better than the first time I, uh, I flew it. It seemed to be a lot cleaner uh, on that particular day, and it was much nicer. Still not as clean as something like the Rush FPV, which is my favourite VTX, which will generally go an awful long way on less power and have a very clean screen. But more interesting to me is the way I was interpreting the DBM RSSI value, which I was being way too conservative about when I was looking at it. That's because I got sort of this arbitrary like limit in my head to think minus 95, that's weak because it's nearly at 100 and 100 and something is where it bows out. Not realizing that of course that you could go on 100 for like several kilometers and it will stay on 100, which I think is really interesting. But I think both values need to be used in uh, combination with another because you wouldn't want to carry on and say well my RSSI is fine if your L LQ is dropping off to like 50 because that would be very bad. Similarly if you still got uh, an LQ of 100 but you're at like minus 110 you know you're very very close to that absolute limit so you might want to turn around then as well. So essentially I have to stop being too much of a wuss if I want to push out on any long range things uh, which I kind of like doing because A, it gets the adrenaline pumping a little bit when you're scared about like, oh my God, I'm gonna lose it because I'm further away. Uh, and B, it's, it's an interesting sort of technical idea to make sure your equipment can go far out um, without having to do like outrageous things. This, this was a little bit outrageous because I used like very high power levels. In terms of Express LRS and the power we should be using there, in terms of dynamic power, kind of people use it more of a battery saving thing because if you just whack the power up all the way that takes a lot of power from the battery and if you've only got a radio with like a couple of 18650 cells you might drain them quite quickly. I've got a 6000 mAh2 cell in my radio so I'm not particularly worried about it but I kind of find it interesting on dynamic power to see what are the circumstances where the signal drops out and often it's it's what we don't think about if we're very close by but we're out on a bit of a null then you can often see the power whooshing right up to like a watt because it's like, ah, I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a null point and I can't get anything. So up the power to see what we can do. So I kind of find it interesting to look at as well. But yeah, should I find a place where I can actually go further because I'm kind of a bit stuck. I can't go any further that way because I'll hit a road. Uh, I could go further out a, a different way over the sea another way, but we'll, we'll have to have a look and, and see what's feasible 
to uh, check what we can do on that. But it's an interesting technical exercise, I feel. Anyway, that's the video for today, and I hope it was helpful, and I will catch you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.